you know, when she was two, three, four years old, that was pretty funny, you know, but now she's in her 20s, it's freaking hilarious. <laughs> well, I forgot to mention when I was talking about my family, I have a, a 25 year old daughter with severe or low functioning autism. You guys love somebody with autism by any chance? That's right, she's the most amazing human being I've ever known in my life. I don't know where I'd be without my daughter, Maria. She's awesome. So I'm gonna talk about her right now, and you're not laughing at her, you're just gonna laugh along with me at incredible things that she does in public. It's amazing. And one of the most fun sometimes is watching other people's reactions, because people freak out. They hide their children, and uh, it's, it's incredible. <laughs> but what, <laughs> One of my favorite Maria stories is we had some new friends we're trying to become friends with come over to our house for dinner. So we're all at the dinner table. Now Maria's, you know, 20 something years old at this point. And it, so Maria happened to spill a couple drops of her drink on her shirt. And in Maria world, that means that shirt comes off completely <laughs> right there and then. Right there, completely off, naked, waist up. Now. You know, when she was two, three, four years old, that was pretty funny, you know, but now she's in her 20s, it's freaking hilarious. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, our, our guests, our mouths just drop and we're, uh, they're, what the heck is going on? There's a naked girl at the table in the Guido family? We're just shoveling pasta, man. Ah, ah. Someone get Maria a shirt, whatever. Never seen a naked girl before? Wow, ah. It's life with Maria, man. She does everything we want to do and won't. <laughs> you know? <laughs> Could you imagine yourself? You know, you spill something, you just rip your shirt off right in a restaurant or something, you know? <laughs> well, speaking of that, I've, I'll share another one with you because you enjoyed that show so much. One time we're out with Maria in a restaurant and she was like 11 years old and we got to watch her, you know? Because we're in a restaurant and they're leading us to our table. <laughs> And, <laughs> you know this, and uh, so I should have been watching her more carefully. I'm right behind Maria walking, but I wasn't paying that much attention as I should have. And in Maria world, again, is I like French fries. I see French fries. I eat French fries. She just reaches down with her big paw, scoops up, a handful of fries with ketchup dripping on as she walks past these people's table. <laughs> there again, like, what the heck is happening? Sasquatch is here. <laughs> so what do I do? What, I just, as I walk by, I go, ah, she's really hungry. <laughs> They're freaking out. <laughs> but one of the best is, um, and I really appreciate you going along with me on this. It's amazing. She's, ah. Mm -mm. So, um, again, when she was about 10 or 11 years old, they signed her up for Special Olympics. Shot put. I don't know whose idea that was, because <laughs> do I look like Jefferson Jarvis up here? <laughs> World-renowned shot putter? No, I don't. But anyway, so you'll see where this story's going wrong, and you'll see how stupid I am as I get farther into it. You'll see it coming. So I get in my car, 12 pound shot put sitting between Maria, shot put me, I'm driving. And what I say is, so Maria, all you have to do is throw this, <laughs> and then we'll go to McDonald's. Right? You see it coming, right? Maria picks it up, heaves it out the window of our moving vehicle onto the hood of a pickup truck driven by, this guy wasn't just a redneck, he was like a red body. He, he had high blood pressure from head to toe. But the best part is after she heaves it out, wheels are screeching, there's the thing fell on the guy's hood. People are screaming, and Maria just looks to me all calm with a smile on her face. McDonald's, please. <laughs> so, oh, thank you. <laughs> 
So, you know, what else can you do but laugh? And have good insurance with a low um, deductible. Um, so my name is Mike Guido. Okay, Guido. Okay? It's kind of obvious, Italiano, you know? But sometimes I don't understand. People just don't get it. A few, a few weeks ago, after a show, this guy's going, Hey, Guido! Hey, Guido! Hey, is that Italian? <laughs> so I had my uncle break both his kneecaps. <laughs> and now there's no question. <laughs> Are you kidding me? Is Guido Italian? My daughter has a goatee. <laughs> She's right here. Ah, it's Guido Italian. Yeah, I put Parmesan on my Cocoa Puffs. Come on. <laughs> when I got married, they said, do you take this woman? I said, hey, forget about it. <laughs> it's Guido Italian. Give me a break. So this year, though, I will celebrate with my dear wife 28 years of wedded bliss. Thank you. Yeah. Very excited, and sometimes uh, people like, okay, I live in the LA area where if you're married 28 days, people kind of freak out like, wow, good job. Um, so 28 years, sometimes they'll ask me like, what's your secret? And I'll say, well, it's really simple. Um, the secret to our successful marriage is that when my wife and I first got married, we sat down and we came up with a plan, a plan for our happiness. And yeah, the plan was that from that point forward, each one of us agreed to do whatever she wants. <laughs> really? Yeah, she does whatever she wants, and I do whatever she wants. I'm a happy guy. A little bored, but I'm pretty happy. Sometimes... Now listen, I don't want to give her a bad, bad name here, a bad rap, because my wife is amazing. She puts up with me, all right? But sometimes she will let me like go out of the house by myself <laughs> to run errands for her and our family. And she will literally get a piece of paper and put boxes that I check off when I finish that task. And I like that. Because for me, that's security. I come home with all my boxes checked, I get my hair tussled, I get a Scooby snack, and I'm watching Sports Center. It's a great thing. I'll tell you one time, she calls me, I'm out running my errands, and she calls me, she goes, hey, how come you're not home yet? Listen to this. <clears throat> it's not on my list. <laughs> Oh, yeah. Yeah, I never tried that again. I, that was awful. That night was awful. We have a bumpy couch. Oh, man. The other thing is, um, when we first got married, I got to give it to my wife, because I've always been kind of immature, because <laughs> I'm a guy. When we first got married, I was so mature, my wife tried suing my parents for child support. <laughs> Yes, married all that time, I'm a dad, love being a dad. I know kid guys have children, right? Applaud if you have children, all right? And don't we just love our kids so much? We love them so much. And aren't we like really glad they're not here? Right now? Yeah, it seems like these days what gets me is every kid has a condition, you know? When I was a kid, we categorized things a little different. That kid's smart, that kid's dumb. <laughs> that kid's good, that kid's bad. That kid can pay attention, that kid can't. But now everyone's got a condition, you know? In my family alone, over the years, we've had ADD, ADHD, cable. Because <laughs> ADHD is just ADD in your face! Squirrel! <laughs> so we've had that. ADD, ADHD, Asperger's syndrome, and autism. 
all running around my house at times. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> my wife and I finally realized, hey, it's easier and cheaper just to medicate us. <laughs> Are you kidding me? We're popping all kinds of pills and we're happy all the time. <laughs> Kids are breaking things, setting fires, injuring each other. We're just happy the children are playing well together. We're raising great kids. <laughs> oh my goodness. It's been crazy at my house over the years. I remember one time, this guy stole my identity. He gave it back. He's like, dude, I don't want to be you. Your life sucks. Which is pretty hard to take from a felon. <laughs> Our family mascot is the bipolar bear. <laughs> I even have a daughter that used to have oppositional defiance disorder. You ever heard of that? Yeah. yeah, that's a thing. Oppositional defiance disorder. Back in my day, hey, you're a brat, okay? <laughs> Knock it off. But now you have a condition, we'll have to medicate you or give you counseling and, because oppositional defiance is when she would just almost violently refuse to do what we said simply because we asked her. That was it. It kind of reminds me of Republicans and Democrats these days. <laughs> you know, where, where one party won't go along with an idea because the other party thought of it. <laughs> Which leads me to believe very strongly that we would get a lot more done in this country with a properly medicated Congress. <laughs> oh, I'll beg. I'll help you along. I call my program Dope the Dopes. Um, <laughs> and you know, um, when I was growing up, my mom, she didn't have access to all the, you know, every conditions and taking pills for everything. I mean, she, my mom was a New York Italian mom. So she just handled everything by screaming at us 24 seven, pretty much. Um, a few weeks ago, my teenage daughter is in our kitchen. She's got the music blasting and she is just getting into it. And she, pretty good, huh? Right? <laughs> Dancing with the stars, right? <laughs> I'm a, what they call in the business a double threat. He's funny and he can dance. So anyway, my daughter is in the kitchen and she's just getting down, listening to her tunes. And she sees me standing there. She goes, come on, dad, shake what your mama gave you. I was like, I don't know how to shake low self-esteem. Because <laughs> that's what grandma gave me, sweetheart. I pretty much hate myself still. So right now, I live in my house with my wife and four daughters. Yeah, me and five women in my house. There's no toilet paper ever. I don't, they must eat it. I don't know what else can be happening. Must be some high fiber Charmin diet or something. I have no idea. There are three rolls in there yesterday. What's going on? But every once in a while, I'll have a concerned, you know, manly, macho friend say, hey, Mike, dude, hey, buddy, five chicks in the house and you? Hey, man, how's your masculinity holding up? And I'm here to say right now, well, you saw me dance, so. Um, <laughs> I'm here to say right now that my masculinity is fine, no worries. Now, I still have an occasional yeast infection. <laughs> So we had one boy in our family. He was adopted. So basically to have a boy, I had to buy one. Um, 
It's Craigslist. And, uh, he came with a lawnmower. Um, just kidding. I love him. But he was never, man, he's just not the sharpest tool in the shed. He just isn't. I love him. We all love him. But man, um, one time we were camping and we're in a yurt. You know what a yurt is? It's like tent deluxe, you know, like four-star tent. Um, well, it's getting to be bedtime. We turn out the lights and one of his sisters says, hey, there's a bug in here. The boy goes, there's a bug in here? I'm sleeping outside. <laughs> so in the Guido household, by the way, Italiano, I mean, you can embezzle, you can gamble, but you can't say the H word, which is hate. That's banned in our house, okay? You can understand that, it's a terrible word. So um, I was driving to a show one night and my wife calls me and she says, hey, the boy told his older sister he hated her. Okay, put him on the phone. So I'm like, hey man, did you tell your sister you hate her? And he's like talking to like Scooby-Doo on Quaaludes, okay? He's like, yeah. <laughs> I said, you know you can't do that, right? Yeah. <laughs> so you have to apologize. Yeah. <laughs> okay, I love you, pal. <laughs> so after the show, I'm driving back home, my wife calls me and I said, so how did he do? Did he apologize? She goes, well, sort of. He said, I'm sorry, I hate you. <laughs> so I live, oh my goodness, the traffic in LA. I live an hour's drive, you know, outside of LA. It's about 20 minutes if you walk. Do you know what the highest cause of death on LA freeways is? It's old age. <laughs> people, people get in their car, we see it on the news all the time. They get in their car and 40 years later, they just stop and die. <laughs> they haven't gotten anywhere. Yeah, it's pretty bad. So uh, yeah, there's that. Um, I've been doing some, <clears throat> oh, the other thing about California is they just made uh, marijuana legal, recreational. Like, what a weird word to put to pot, right? <laughs> it's recreational. Well, that's good, let's do that. I love recreation. <laughs> Little shuffleboard and pot. <laughs> I'm recreational, I drive an RV and smoke pot. <laughs> but I noticed now I was in a hotel in San Diego and when I closed the door in my, when I was in my room they had two signs one was a picture of a cigarette with a circle and a slash through it and the other was a picture of a pot plant with a circle and a slash through it um, but it said absolutely nothing about heroin so <laughs> I, it was still I salvaged the weekend <laughs> I don't do that. It's not true. Um, what else? I've been doing some traveling. I was recently working in Idaho because my career is on fire. Uh, <laughs> you know why I'm so excited to be here, right? You've been there. No, it's really nice. Idaho was nice. The people were great. They didn't get my comedy. They just didn't. So it was kind of a living hell for me while I was there. Hell as a noun, so it's okay. Um, it's in the scriptures. Well, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> and then while I was there to make it extra special for me, they put me up in a Motel 6. <laughs> so it was kind of like being in hell at hell. It was like hell squared. <laughs> I think they should be Motel 666 myself. Okay. <laughs> wow, I hesitated saying that. But the reward was fantastic. I'm a bad boy! 
I'm a dangerous man. <laughs> uh, I had a night off in Idaho. Oh, you're going to like this. And my wife was with me, so we went to a supper club. It was jam-packed with people. Almost couldn't find a parking spot. Big parking lot. Jam-packed with people. Know what it was? It was south of the border night. You know what that was, though? It was just a bunch of people from Idaho dressed up like people from Utah. <laughs> Um, a few days ago, I was down where I live in Southern California. It was a beautiful day. And um, but I had one of those really frustrating days. You know those days you think it'll just never end? Yeah, I played golf. <laughs> I'm not even done yet. I have to go back. <laughs> Any golfers here? People play golf? Yeah? yeah? What do you shoot for 18 holes, sir? 79, huh? <laughs> what was the temperature that day? Oh, about 140. I might have mixed those two up. Um. <laughs> Do you ever have problems with the windmill? <laughs> That's a tough hole. I don't know what they're laughing at. That's a tough hole. The windmill and the clown's face one? I can't. It creeps me out. I can't even do it. <laughs> Do you watch golf on television, sir? Oh, you're done with me now, huh? <laughs> well, if you do, it's a good idea, because those guys, I mean, oh my goodness. It's crazy how good they are. And um, I see these pros on television. I'm just trying to think right now who I saw recently. I'm just going to go with Tiger Woods, because everyone knows Tiger Woods, and he's making his big comeback and all. But man, Tiger Woods will tee off, and he drives the ball like 1,000 or 2,000 yards or something. I mean, the ball's going, it's banging off weather satellites. It, it comes down with postage from Japan on it. it. It lands on the green with backspin. What? It rolls and rolls, follows the contour of the green, ends up two inches from the hole. You know, Tiger's like, oh. <laughs> I'm thoroughly amazed. I can't believe it. And then the announcer will say this. Well, that was a pretty nice shot for Tiger. <laughs> a pretty nice shot? You know what a nice shot to me is? It's where I hit the ball and it lands on grass. <laughs> I mean, I'm thrilled to death if I get to hit that same ball one more time. <laughs> oh yeah, you could tell me in the golf course, I got a backpack, a chainsaw, Scuba gear, <laughs> parachute, firewood. I got to load it in my four-wheel drive golf cart. <laughs> Buckle up, it's my last ball, we're going in. <laughs> hey Mike, what'd you shoot today? I don't know, the computer was down. <laughs> How about baseball? Baseball fans and all? <laughs> yeah! We're starting it again. Beautiful time of year, spring training. I, I've always loved baseball. My dad brought me up on baseball. I've always loved baseball. But I have a problem nowadays because it seems like every player is, is a multimillionaire, and some of them just don't do that well, and they're still making millions. Like, I saw a pitcher recently who um, his career record was 23 wins, 37 losses, and he signed with a team as a free agent for like $8 million a year to lose most of the time. <laughs> I can do that, here. <laughs> but the thing that really kills me is sometimes they hold out, like they won't report to spring training because 8.2 million isn't enough for them to play baseball. They need 11.4 or they're not showing up. You know, the way I look at it, if I'm making any amount of money and the last word is million, <laughs> who cares? <laughs> you go down to the bank, take out some cash under balance, it just says, hey, don't worry about it. <laughs> You're good. Get in your Hummer and drive home, dude. But man, the other thing too is, so what happens when a team has a couple bad years in a row? Who gets fired? The manager gets fired for not motivating these multimillionaires to play better baseball. I was thinking, wouldn't it be nice if it worked that way down at your job? 
<laughs> Imagine that, you're unbelievably overpaid, you show up late, you have a lousy attitude, you don't do a thing while you're there, you go home early, and they fire your boss. <laughs> So, yeah, um, sometimes I think I'm turning into my dad, which is really ridiculous because growing up, he drove me crazy. And now I'm becoming him, and I like it. <laughs> I love when my kids say, you remind me of grandpa. I'm like, yeah. And I'll use his same dumb jokes he drove me crazy with on them. Just passing it on, you know. Um, but my dad, <clears throat> growing up, he was never never really imaginative on gift giving, okay? <laughs> Typical dude. He had my sisters and I on the dollar a year plan for our birthdays. You know what that is? You, when you turn nine, he gives you nine bucks. You turn 14, you get $14. He never stopped. He stuck with that plan. I turn 50. I get a check in the mail for 50 bucks. I'm like, ooh, party. <laughs> Hey, Dad, yeah, thanks for that check. Woo! Can't wait for next year. <laughs> but that's nothing. It was worse for my sister. She had this really big religious experience. Said she was born again last year. <laughs> and this year he sent her a dollar. <laughs> wow, you guys did good. No, that's a hard joke. Oh, that's a really hard joke. And a lot of you, some of you were still, just stare him down. Please. Don't know where he's going with this. Don't get it. Hey, I'll beg. I'll beg. Well, I know it's what you wanted to do, but audiences are so funny. Um, no one else is applauding, so I better not set a precedent and be a leader in a really great cause. just selfish. <laughs> but my dad, yeah, I mean, he drove me crazy. I mean, it was really scary for me because I don't know about you, but I could always look at my dad and see myself in about 30 years, and I always thought, man, he has got to change. <laughs> I'll wait. <laughs> one time, just one time, I went to my dad for some solid fatherly advice. It didn't work out at all. I went to him like crying, going, Dad, everything's wrong in my life. I mean, I don't know what to do anymore. I'm, I'm done. Dad, I'm, I'm going to commit suicide. He goes, well, you know, you're only hurting yourself. <laughs> well, thank you, Yoda. That... You know what, Dad? Now I feel like killing me and you. Okay, let's go together. <laughs> oh man, yeah. So I've noticed um, a, a fashion phenomenon that has passed, which I'm grateful for, for the most part. It's when girls and women wore writing on their pants, on their bottoms. What was that for? You know, sometimes it would say angel on their butt. You know that's not right. <laughs> Sometimes I'd have to say, hey, can you stop walking? Because I can't read it. <laughs> hey, there's a letter missing. <laughs> and then, oh, there it is. And I'm sorry, if you start with B-U-M on your butt and you, U is missing, it's just B-M, and that's just not good advertising. <laughs> no, it's not. <laughs> well, time flies when you're having fun, right? <clears throat> of course, then again, time flies when you're in a coma, so. I've always wanted to be in somebody's uh, hospital room when they snap out of about a two-year coma, you know? I'm at the foot of their bed. They don't know me, but I'm like... <laughs> you are the man! 
Welcome back. I think if I'm ever in that situation and I'm snapping out of a long coma, I'm looking around the room and I basically have two questions. One, <laughs> did I poop? <laughs> and two, which one of you handled that? Because uh, I think we have to get engaged. I'm... Oh my goodness. Well, I was in the Four Seasons Hotel in San Diego because and I don't know how to act in these situations. So I'm getting ready for bed, and there's a knock at the door. And I open the door, this little crack, and there's a hotel employee standing there, and he goes, good evening, sir. Can I turn down your bed? And I, I didn't know what he wanted. I guess you guys know now. But I didn't know, I was thinking, he wants to, and he told me he's gonna come in my room and pull down my covers for me. Like, I can't handle that? I'm like, dude, I read the manual. I'm in the thing. <laughs> Slam. Next night, same guy. He knocks at the door, dun, dun, dun. and I open the door. He goes, good evening, sir. Can I turn down your bed? And I was like, yeah. Where have you been? I am so tired. I've been waiting for an hour and a half for you to get here been sleeping on the floor till you got here. Thank you. Oh man, I love it. I love it so much. This is a really cool job if you can ever do it. So um, in my travels, one thing it was great here because parking is okay here. I mean, I got here early and I just parked right down the street, no problem. Now, I'm sometimes in places like Boston, <laughs> LA. Psh. San Francisco is probably the worst place on the planet to find a legal parking spot, right? Yeah. Are you with me on that? Yeah. Well, let's not take it anymore! <laughs> oh, wait. I'm not an activist. No. Okay. <laughs> I don't even know what I'm doing anymore. Um, I don't want to see that on film right there. Um, so um, I'm in San Francisco and I found a legal parking spot. It was like a miracle. There was a, a shaft of light and angels. So I pulled my car into that spot and I'm sitting behind the wheel reading the newspaper. I'm just waiting for someone. And this lady pulls alongside me and she is like dressed in a very, well, first of all, she's driving a Lamber Mercedes BM something, Lexa something that costs more than my house. And she's dressed in this business suit and she's got her hair all did and her nails and she's got pearls and her, wow, okay? So she wants to know, obviously, can she have that spot? Am I leaving? So first she just taps on the horn, beep, beep. And I ignore her, I'm just reading my newspaper. Then she lays on the horn a little harder. And her horn actually said, I'm better than you. <laughs> uh, I'm ignoring her reading my newspaper. She lays on the horn more. She rolls down the window. Hey, excuse me. Hey, I'm just... I'm ignoring her reading my newspaper. And she's not liking this at all. She's like, hey, I have a very important meeting. I need to get in that building right there. Can you please move that? Whatever you're driving, get out of there. I'm ignoring her reading my newspaper. And then she snapped. She just snapped. Next thing I know, I hear her screaming, hey, idiot, are you living? <laughs> so I folded up my paper and I looked over at her. I go, hey, lady, chill out. Yes, I'm leaving. I'm leaving right now. So she backed her car up and I got out of mine and walked away. <laughs> Thank you, everybody. Thank you for coming.